hello guys welcome back to another video of automation testing insider so today i'm going to cover an important topic that is test design testing techniques and this is an important interview question as well so guys earlier we have covered what you mean by test scenario what is test case and uh, how to write the test cases and i have shown you the format as well we discussed about uh, real time test template as well now today we'll focus on what are the different test design testing techniques available now if you see the process guys uh, whenever we get the requirement from the customer like business requirement document or frs so we have different uh, requirement points right business requirement points then we need to uh, convert them into test scenarios we derive the test scenarios from test scenarios we write the test cases right different test cases so this is the simple process which we used to follow then the question arises here is why we go for test design testing techniques correct if you write the simple if you cover all the br points business requirement documents and we when we cover them to test uh, when we uh, cover all the scenarios and write, written the test cases then why we go for test design testing techniques so there are a couple of points guys which uh, and that is the reason we go for test design uh, testing techniques so what are those points those are uh, important points the first one is better coverage of your testing better coverage of all the scenarios right so using these techniques we can cover maximum number of scenarios and we can derive the number of maximum number of test cases like all the permutation and combination so our test cases will have the better coverage so that is one of the reasons and the second reason is to write effective test cases effective test cases so to write effective test cases we need test design testing techniques so what do you mean by effective test cases guys so using these techniques we can write some test cases in such a way that it will find maximum number of defects or good defects so that is nothing but the effective test cases so these are the two important points uh, and because of that we we go for test design testing techniques and that these two points are very very important in testing so let's talk about what are the testing techniques available guys test design testing techniques so we have boundary value analysis so this is the first one boundary value analysis we have we have uh, equivalence class partitioning third is decision table testing state transition and fifth one is error guessing testing so these are the five types of test design testing techniques guys so let's talk about each one of them in detail from coming slides from the next slides so let's talk about boundary value analysis so the technique is specified to validate the boundary validations correct so the name itself says boundary value analysis so we test uh, we test the application on uh, for particular field we test on boundaries right so that is nothing but boundary value analysis it is based on testing at the boundaries we will be testing both the valid and invalid input values in the boundary value analysis now conditions are like maximum minimum and maximum minimum minus 1 maximum minus 1 minimum plus 1 maximum plus 1 so these are the six conditions so let me give you an example so that you can understand better so let's say guys you are applying for a job in any company's portal you are applying for a job and you are entering your details all the uh, information there in the uh, form like first name last name and we have some email address so similarly we have one age field as well age input box there you need to specify the age as well and for this particular job we have age criteria so like uh, from 20 to 35 if you have falling in this category like uh, 20 years uh, to 35 years then you can apply for this job so it should throw an error if you enter like if you are 19 years old or if you are 36 year old correct so this is the basic uh, application uh, like basic criteria for this particular form now how you derive the test cases boundary value analysis how do you do that right so so minimum point is let's say minimum is our minimum value is 20 and maximum is 30 correct and we have condition minimum minus 1 so what is minimum minus 1 20 minus 1 19 20 plus 1 minimum plus 1 21 how about the at maximum side maximum minus 1 34 Uh, maximum plus one thirty six. So these are the six test cases, guys. From here we derive that six test cases. So no need to test each and every value like twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five like that. So we derive the test cases based on boundary value 
like based on these minimum and maximum values so these are the conditions like minimum plus 1 uh, minimum minus 1 minimum plus 1 maximum maximum minus 1 maximum plus 1 and you can con consider like this is x this is y so this is x minus 1 this is x plus 1 and this is y plus 1 and this is y minus 1 so what are the invalid uh, conditions over here right so 19 it should not take 19 correct and uh, 36 all are positive test cases all it should accept all the values like 20 21 34 and 35 because this is this is under this criteria 20 to 35 range and why we go for this boundary value analysis why do we need so what happens is developer generally uh, make a mistake while developing the application so let's say for this particular scenario let's say while putting the criteria or while putting the condition like if else if if they have mentioned like uh, if age is age is greater than 20 so let's say if developer put the criteria like this if age is greater than 20 so it should take it should accept above 81 only right based on this condition so we should specify like age is greater than or equal to so it should take 20 as well so that is the reason we generally do boundary value analysis using this testing techniques we write the test cases based on boundary values so this is an example of boundary value analysis guys so let's move on to the next slide where uh, i'll talk about another example of boundary value analysis so password field accepts 6 to 32 characters then we only test for minimum 6 maximum 32 minimum minus 1 5 minimum plus 1 7 similarly we have maximum side so it, it should take 6 to 32 so what are the invalid values here so minimum minus 1 this is invalid and maximum plus 1 this is invalid values all it should take all the characters like 6 characters 7 6 digit uh, 7 32 and 31 correct and uh, the next one is these six conditions are enough for password field testing so we derive six test cases for this password to validate this password field now let's talk about the next guys so next one is equivalence equivalence class partition what do you mean by that so the technique is specified to test the valid and invalid combination so what do you mean by that uh, the idea behind this technique to divide the divide a set of test conditions into groups or sets that can be considered the same so let's say we have range of values we have different sets of uh, or different range of values so we divide them into different partitions so that is part of this equivalence class partition now each partition we take one value and we will test the uh, our application so i'll take an example as well i'll give you an example it is a black box testing technique or a specification based testing technique in which we group the input data into logical partitions called equivalence classes so now let me give you an example guys so suppose you have an input field which takes the values from 0 to 500 now you cannot test each and every values right or uh, let's say 1 to 1 to 500 just take an example like 1 to 500 now you cannot uh, uh, test each and every values like 1 2 3 4 5 up to 500 so how you divide into different uh, equivalence class partition right how you divide the how you do the partitioning over here so let's say we have like 500 minus 500 to 0 1 to 100 100 to or 101 101 to 200 201 to 300 301 to 400 and 400 401 to 500 and 501 to 600 so these are the possible scenarios uh, and we can take these are the different partitions guys so minus 500 to 0 so we'll take one value from minus 500 to 0 so let's say we'll test for minus 200 this is one value 1 200 will take only one value so let's say we are going to take 50 from here uh, 101 to 200 will take uh, let's say 151 200 to 300 we will take 210 
301 to 400 will take 350 similarly we'll take between 401 to 500 and 501 to 600 so these are the different partitions and we'll take only one values so how many number of test cases we derived one two three four five six and seven S only seven test cases we'll test only for seven values now let's see like what are the positive test cases and what are negative here so minus 500 to 0 is this it should not accept this one right because the range is from 1 to 500 so this is invalid or this is in a, in a invalid value for this particular testing right 1 to 100 it should accept uh, 100 to 200 201 to 300 this this is also uh, good test data 301 to 400 400 401 to 500 that is also and this is again kind of negative scenarios 501 to 600 so out of seven five is positive test cases and one is two is negative so this is how you can derive the test cases based on equivalence class partitioning let's talk about another example in the next slide guys any mail id fails accepts alphanumeric data correct so what what are the valid data here a to z a to z is valid data all special characters are invalid data a to z uppercase and a to z uh, smaller case and 0 to 9 alphanumeric since it is alphanumeric alpha and numeric right alphabetical and numeric values so all these are valid data and this is invalid data all special characters if a text field accepts 1000 to 500 the partition should be what are the partitions different partitions over here so valid data we have 1000 to 1500 and invalid if you see a to z because uh, this is numeric only and a to z in uppercase number less than 1000 and number greater than 5, um, 5 1500 and all special special characters so these are the different partitions like here we have 2 and 3 5 and 6 6 partitions we have divided and only which this is the valid data so this is how this is another example of equivalence class partitioning guys this is another couple of examples now let's talk about decision table testing this is an important test design technique guys decision table testing is software testing technique used to test the system behavior for different input combinations so generally what happens is we test for different input combinations and one side we have uh, different input combinations another side we have different rules based on those combinations right so i'll talk about that in detail in the next uh, in the next slide in this methodology the various input combinations input combinations and the accompanying system behavior are tabulated so based on combinations combinations different input combinations and what is the behavior right uh, system behavior are tabulated so in tabular form rate format we write the uh, we design the test cases we will drive test cases from that tabular format from that table right so this is systematic approach and decision table testing is black box test design technique guys uh, behavioral or you can say behavior based testing uh, technique when a system has complex business rules then the decision table testing technique helps in identifying the correct test cases when we have complex business rules then we go for decision table testing we have different input combinations and based on that we have different rules then we drive in this for tabular format will drive will drive different test cases from that tabular format from that table let's so let's take an example of this decision table guys so how to create a login screen decision based table let's make a login screen with decision table so a login screen with user id and password input boxes and submit button so whenever we see the login screen so we have a username field password and then we have submit button the condition is simple if the user provides correct username and password then user will be redirected to home page if anything if any of the input is wrong like username or password an error message will be displayed so this is an example of decision table testing so how do we derive the test cases based on decision table right so we have conditions over here in this first column we have conditions so we have username t is nothing but true and false uh, here we have true and false password true and false and output uh, error or home page now let's talk about rule one what it says so username we have true password we have true then we should get to the home page when we enter correct username correct password then we should get 
home page right when we click uh, click on submit button after entering correct username and correct password what about rule 2 what it says if username is correct but password field is wrong password is wrong then we should get error message what rule 3 says if username is false and password is correct username is false and password is correct then we should get error message again and if both are wrong right username and password both are incorrect then we should get error message so these are the different rules guys and from here we can derive four number of test cases this is first second third and fourth test cases right so this is about decisionable testing so what we have learned from here what what is our interpretation what are the different test cases username and password both were correct user navigated to home page username was correct but the password was wrong the user shown an error message third is username is was wrong but password is correct then user shown the error message and last one is if both are incorrect then we should get the error message so while converting these two test cases we can create two scenarios first one so uh to create this four four test cases right so there are basically if you see there are uh, two scenarios generally so one is enter username and password correct username and password correct and click on submit button so that is positive test cases and negative we have three scenarios username and incorrect password so these two are two scenarios one is correct username and password and another one is one of, either one of them is wrong so this is how we derive four test cases using decision table now let's talk about state transition so state transition helps to an analyze behavior of an application for different input conditions guys so in this state uh, test outputs are triggered by changes to the input condition or changes to the state of the system in other words tests are designed to execute valid and invalid state transitions so basically we test uh, on different uh, like valid and invalid states of any system so this is when we have any application which has sequence rules right i mean sequ uh, sequence uh, when when we have some sequence then this uh, test design techniques is very useful so so take an example it is black box testing which is used for real uh, time system with various states and transition involved so what happens let's say let me give you an example so that you can understand uh, whatever we have discussed here in theoretical right so let's say you are going to atm and you insert your card you want to withdraw the money so what happens if you insert the card and enter the wrong password so it will ask you to enter the password again your uh, password is incorrect so it will ask you to enter the password again and from here if you enter the correct password then you will navigate to the uh you you will be able to withdraw the amount and in this second attempt again you will uh, if you are not able to enter the correct password then it will go for the third again if you enter the wrong password then again it will go for the next attempt so i think maximum you will uh, it will be allowed three attempts to enter your password so these are the different states guys so this is like here from here if you in the first attempt first attempt we have tried right so it goes to the next attempt and there are couple of states over here one is valid where uh, we when we enter the correct password then we should be able to get our money and if you enter the wrong password then it will try for the next attempt so this is an example of state transition let's understand this in the next slide in detail yeah so when to use state transition so this can be used uh, when a tester testing the application for finite set of input values so this is the one of the criteria for state transition like uh, we should have some finite set of input values when we have sequence of events that occur in associated conditions that apply to those events so take an example of that uh, which i have given you uh, of atm machine so there we have finite set of input values right we know like three times it will allow and the fourth attempt it will block my card correct this will allow the tester to test the application behavior for a sequence of input values when to not rely on state transition so when the testing is not done for sequential input combination so we when we don't have uh, like uh, any sequence in particular sequence then we cannot go for this state transition 
because in in se sequence like when we would draw the money so this is in particular sequence right when we enter the correct password or incorrect password there are certain stages or certain state so this is kind of particular sequence so when testing is not done for sequential input combination then we cannot go for this state transition if the testing is to be done for different functionalities like exploratory testing then we cannot go for this state transition so take an example for this state transition guys so let's condition uh, condition consider a login page function where if user enters invalid password three times the account will be logged correct correct take an example of that uh, the previous example which i have given atm machine or if you are logging any screen so it will also allow like three times to enter the correct password if you are entering the wrong password multiple times so in this system if user enters a valid password in any of the first three attempts the user will be logged in successfully if the user enters the invalid password the first or second try the user will be asked to re-enter the password and finally if the user enters incorrect password third time the account will be blocked so how we derive this state transition table guys so we have different states over here start s1 start s2 first attempt s3 second attempt s4 third attempt like that s5 granted access granted and s6 account blocked so how you can uh, let me just explain it better so let's say we have different states over here s1 s2 s3 s4 s5 and s6 so these are the different states guys so the first one is start when we start so when we enter the correct password in s1 and in s1 state so it will go to s5 state directly s5 is nothing but granted access granted so we should be able to access the application if we enter the wrong password so there are two conditions in each and every state so in this first state if we enter the correct password then we go to s5 if we enter the wrong password then we go to s2 s2 is first attempt correct first attempt now again here two conditions if we enter the correct password we'll go to s5 otherwise we'll move to s3 s3 again we have two conditions if we enter the correct password we'll go to s5 otherwise s4 now what happens at s4 s4 we have third attempt if we enter the correct password s4 will will go to s5 obviously correct and if we enter the incorrect password so we'll go to s6 what is s6 account blocked you can, your account will be blocked based on multiple times you have tried with incorrect password so this is a state transition guys now let's talk about the next one so in this table when we uh, enter the user enters the incorrect pin sorry enter the correct pin state is transition to s5 which is access granted and if user enters a wrong password he moves to the next state if he does not uh, if he if he or she does the same third time it will reach the account block state so these are the different state right we have access granted state and we have account blocked and it gives uh, previous different states as well like s2 s3 s4 which we have discussed now let's talk about error guessing testing guys so already i have covered uh, a video on this one so you can go to the playlist and you can watch that particular video on error guessing testing technique so what it says let me just give a brief uh, about uh, error guessing testing so testing is conducted by performing invalid operations and validate the error message is displaying or not so this is kind of experience based testing guys so if you have very good knowledge on application or if you are if you are experienced tester or if you have very good analytical skills so that then you can uh, use this testing technique like uh, you will assume in any application like uh, what what is invalid operation when i perform so what what the error, uh, what the error message i should get right so it's based on error guessing you are guessing the error like uh, if i performing this action so i should get particular message so the error message should be meaningful to understand so when we perform some operations like valid or invalid operations generally invalid operations when we perform based on this te testing technique so we should get a proper error message so it is a type of testing method in which prior experience in testing is used to uncover the defects in software software testing right in the software 
it is an experience based testing technique in which the tester uses his or her past experience or intuition to gauge the problematic areas of software application so this is the main purpose like when you have good experience or you use your past experience then you can gauge more number of like problem problematic areas of the application let's take an example of this error guessing testing guys so we need to test a program which reads a file so what happens if the program gets a file which which is empty or the file does not exist so whenever we test let's say we have we are uploading a file in the system and simply we'll upload a file and we'll verify whether it is working or not whether it is taking that file or not but we should also talk think about like if we upload empty file then what what will happen if the file does not exist the, and if you try to upload it what will happen something like that right so this is uh, an example of error guessing testing another one is enter blank space into text field let's say this is uh, this takes this is the text field and suppose i am entering my name hitendra underscore like uh, i am giving a space and verma so what will happen right sometimes uh, developer develop the application in such a way that it should not there should not be any space in the text field so we should con consider we should uh, test these kind of scenarios as well as part of error guessing and if you enter like this then what should be the error message like uh, the name is not proper or uh, in incorrect name something like that we should get the error use maximum limits of files to be uploaded this is another example of error guessing testing guys so these are the uh, different testing design techniques guys five testing design techniques we talked about so if you have still if you have any doubts or if you have any comments then uh, please write your queries in the comment box of this video and please like share this video and if you are new to this channel then please subscribe this channel as well and click the bell icon to get the notification for upcoming videos thank you guys for watching and please visit my website as well automationtestinginsider.com we have different notes over here about all kind of testing so thank you guys for watching have a nice day bye bye